okay, yeah, it's, it's good. It's not telling us much of a story, which it needs to. I mean, what is the marking at the top of this moment? Without looking. Nagel Misto, Consortino. What is it? Yes, Consortino. It's still your favorite thing. What does Misto mean? Sad or mournful. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't sound quite mournful or sad enough. It sounds a bit, sometimes a bit efficient, I felt. Um, how will we make it mournful? What will make it mournful? C.P. Barth used to reduce people to tears by his playing of slow movements. Uh, long notes, I don't know how he managed that on the harpsichord. <laughs> <laughs> well, and clavichord. And clavichord. Um, Anyway, yes, how are you going to make it more mournful? What, what makes it mournful? Maybe I should ask. It's all the, the, the dissonances. Yes, the dissonances, but also the falling into it. And you're playing them very equally. So you go. As opposed to. So there's much more shape, I think, than you're making. Okay, let's begin again. all these fortes and pianos, which I'm glad you aren't exaggerating as many people do. That's so, that's so spent so long begging the orchestra not to do that, so not going. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> and C.P. Bach makes it very clear in his manual. He says, do not change harpsichord manuals between forte and piano. Just phrasing. But here, now, no, there's no staccato. Again, this really is an aria, and there's no reason a singer would go yum. Shallow, yes, I can see it's a bit high there, top B, but for you, I don't know why you don't play that top B. It's part of your life. But anyway, you didn't go towards it. So that... All that. So just, you know, it's one line. This. It really is such an hour. Just where you come in. Shapes that are beautiful, not notes. Ah, it's better. Yeah, no. But even though it says forte, not. I mean, this is this is a story about somebody who falls in love with a man who wears like scarlet jackets and blue trousers, <laughs> scarlet socks, for instance, and just you know, plucking it out of the air. Um, <laughs> And they're madly in love with him, but he doesn't return the love. So... Oh, my whip. Oh, whip, please love me. <laughs> so I think that C.P. Bach had in mind. Also, if you do that ornament, which is fine, but make sure it makes sense. I mean, you go... Uh, but if you're going to do it, make it expressive. 
somehow. You know, an ornament has to be there for a reason, not just because it's there. Um, and also, don't feel you have to vibrate every note, because you don't. You don't need. So you said first and third, I'd say second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How would you sing it? You wouldn't sing. Would you? Maybe you would. But I think... Isn't that the most natural? Hmm. I don't know, I don't want to force it on you, but it seems to me that's how you'd sing it in the shower. <laughs> Why did the composer put that? Why didn't he put that? Why am I playing it like that? Why am I doing vibrato there? Why am I doing vibrato there? It's like an annoying, one should be like an annoying child. So, um, <laughs> so the, the red light. Why? Uh, why? <laughs> you have to be that annoying child. Same dog, but this is the nose on the front of the dog pointing forward. I like that image. So this is the middle flowing tempo. <laughs> There's always 
movement. Cello versions in E flat, which 
which makes much more sense. I think that's a misprint. Should be new Yeah, it was good except it was very nice. But except still accented that. Don't sound like an instrumentalist. Oh, 
huge diminuendo, but I think there's a feeling of coming down. Really? 
again. It's, it's full of these rococo shapes. Just on the sequence. <laughs> Yeah, you don't. 